wenn es anfangen wird. Right. Good afternoon, everyone. Dr. Rachel Valletta, environmental scientist with the Franklin Institute here. Today I'm on this beautiful afternoon nature hike in East Fairmount Park, and I'm bringing you a very special Facebook Live event. Now, this is associated with our Franklin Outside uh, effort. The Franklin Outside effort is a digital uh, nature scavenger hunt. So every day this week, don't worry if you haven't tuned in yet, you have an opportunity to jump in whenever you're ready. Every day this week, we are posting one or two nature photos that yours truly has taken when I'm out walking the dogs in the morning or taking a run in the afternoon. Now, we are doing this because we recognize that families are cooped up. 
It's really tough right now with the quarantine. We've got two, three, four adults, my neighbors, living in 700 square foot homes on top of one another. We recognize that going outdoors is the perfect opportunity for us to relieve some anxiety, lower those stress levels, and blow off some steam. And we want to make sure, of course, that we're doing it safely. So the first thing that you might be asking is, why aren't I wearing my face mask? Well, folks, I did bring it along, my homemade face mask here. I've made mine out of my favorite bandana. And of course, I've had it properly secured over both my nose and my mouth when I've been out running and walking. Secondly, I've only come out today with my partner behind the camera today directing me because we've been in the house together. We've already been sharing the same airspace. So it's okay for us to be together at the park. Thirdly, I make sure that I'm social distancing. All of the passerbys I've gone by, I'm giving a nice wide berth, at least six feet, of course. So on to why we're in the middle of the woods, crouching next to a maple tree. Well, with the Franklin outside photo of the day, we'll be posting a spotted lanternfly egg mass. This is the first hard difficulty photo that we've suggested you following along at home help us find. And why are we out looking for the spotted lanternfly? Well, it turns out that this is the perfect time to go hunting for these egg masses. We can kill up to 30 to 50 individual eggs that are contained within a single egg casing or these gray splotches that are on this maple tree next to me in one single swipe. And in just a moment, I'm going to show you exactly how we can do that. But there are a couple tools that I needed to bring out with me in order to do this successfully. The first tool I've brought along is a little plastic baggie. Inside the plastic baggie, I've put just a thin lining of some hand sanitizer. The alcohol within that hand sanitizer will help envelope those eggs once I deposit them inside and really ensure that the eggs break down. Sometimes squishing them isn't enough. So I've just grabbed a, a used Cheez-It baggie here. So we wanna make sure, of course, that we're reusing all of our plastic. So I'll keep that nice and close. The second tool I've brought along is a credit card. This one actually is from an old ski mountain from this winter. You wanna make sure you have one of these handy in your back pocket or another firm plastic surface that can scrape along the edge of the tree to squeeze off those eggs so that we can collect them inside that plastic bag. Now, for those of you that don't know why we're talking about spotted lanternfly at all, you might have been living under a rock the past few years. This is about an inch long insect that's been invading all over Pennsylvania. Other invaders include motorcycles on Kelly Drive behind me. But the spotted lanternfly, it turns out, is much worse for our agricultural production in the state of Pennsylvania. And it's affecting many of the hardwoods that we ship out and otherwise create some economic drive with. So certainly the maple tree, we're also concerned about the health of. Now, these insects, will remember them from the fall. Those of us living in center city, Philadelphia, we were seen stomping around trying to crush as many as possible. They're beguiling, quite beautiful, but of course they're disastrous. They've got those bright yellow and pink uh, colorations on their body, and they've got two sets of wings with grayish coloring and dark black dots on the outside. That's how we know characteristically what they look like. They also have on their faces a long proboscis. It's, it can pierce and suck. And what does that mean? That means when the adult spotted lanternfly lands upon a hardwood like this, it can pierce that bark and push that proboscis all the way down to the lowermost level of the outer bark. Okay, and that area is where something called the phloem is. And the phloem contains all of the sugars that the tree is producing for itself, for its own food, after the event of photosynthesis. So we want to make sure that those eggs never have the opportunity to hatch, to get to the adult phase, so that that piercing can never actually happen. So here, here we are. We're going to take the first mitigative step against the spotted lanternfly. It's a pretty straightforward, pretty quick event. So remember, I brought along with me a little plastic credit card and my plastic baggie here. And we're going to go ahead and start collecting some of these egg masses. So take a, take a peek here at where I'm pointing. You can see those gray splotches on there. They're about an inch, maybe an inch and a half long. And they look right now a bit like dried cement, don't they? Now, these egg masses, do you think they were recently lain or do you think they were lain some time ago? Yeah, I think they were lain some time ago. And why do I think that? Well, it sort of looks like they've dried out, doesn't it? In fact, we can tell the difference between a wet and a dry egg mass. 
The first indicator that these were laying a long time ago is that it's springtime. We know that the adult spotted lanternfly lays its egg masses back in the fall. Remember I said around September or so. <clears throat> now those crackles, as I mentioned, look like dry cement. I think when it's wet, it looks a little bit like paper mache. It looks kind of sticky, almost like wet glue. So once we're dried here, we can see that the edges are nicely tight, packed in, and what they're actually covering are individual vertical layers of the eggs inside. There are three to 50 individual eggs contained within that egg mass. And I'm gonna try and expose them right now so you can sort of see what that looks like. So I'm gonna peel away just the top layer of that egg casing, and it's a little bit firm on the outside, but you can see it sort of flakes away. and I'm collecting that in my baggie, but I haven't actually scraped any eggs yet. If you can see here, I've got individual layers. They look almost like little tiny black seeds. Now those are the individual eggs inside there, and they're stuck to the tree, and they're being held safely in by that egg casing, until we come along, that is. So get out your plastic cards and get ready to scrape these suckers. I'm gonna put my plastic bag right up tight against the bark, Make sure I have a nice opening to squeeze them into, and we're going to start scraping. Ah! So they're pretty icky, and I'm scraping some off just so we can take a look at them before we actually squash them. So here, can you see individually there, right there? Yeah? We're having some trouble with the shading. We can see those individual eggs on there, can't we? Now, it turns out we can also squash these guys. Put some shade up, we can see that there. Can we see those individual eggs? A Little bit closer. We're working on a low budget here, folks. We appreciate you working with us. Well, it's tough to tell in this lighting anyway, but what I did there was show you an individual egg, and that's what we have lined up here. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna squash those guys and collect them inside. So I'm gonna run that card right up that egg mass. You can hear them crackling, it gets a little bit wet and juicy. It's, oh, it's totally gross. And this time I am really gonna try and make sure you can see it. Can we cover it there? My director's helping me out. You can see all those juices. That's the egg masses that have just been crushed. So I'm gonna deposit those into that plastic bag. It's a pretty gross job, isn't it? The life of the environmental scientist was never boring. And we'll go back for one last scrape. Okay, so I've scraped the eggs off there and I only crushed some so that I could show you what the whole eggs looked like. But you wanna make sure that you're crushing all of those eggs. So when you come out here, you'll do something like this. Really easy, put that plastic bag up and go ahead and scrape away. Make sure you're pushing down nicely. And depositing right into that baggie. Alrighty, and that was a nice clean one. Now, inside my baggie, it might be tough to see, but I could have upwards of 100 or so eggs in there. Now, it was quite simple for me to get this little, uh, these two little patches off, right? And you wanna make sure that you're looking for those egg masses that you can safely reach. Don't go climbing up into any trees if you can't get there safely. Um, but certainly spend your time while we're out in nature, keeping a keen eye for looking for these splotches. Now, I've got my work cut out for me, but before I let us go, I'll ask if we have any questions. Do spotted lanternflies gravitate to certain trees? Yeah, that's an excellent question. Spotted lanternflies do have a particular penchant for the tree of heaven. Now, when I say penchant, it means that they really, really like the tree of heaven. And we're not 100% sure why, but scientists believe it could be because this particular tree species is also an invasive from a similar part of the world that the spotted lanternfly is. The spotted lanternfly probably hitchhiked here from Southeast Asia, perhaps parts of China. It turns out that the tree of heaven is also from that part of the world. But it's not just the tree of heaven that attracts the spotted lanternfly. The spotted lanternfly is a generalist feeder and it eats on a whole bunch of different um, wood, wood species, tree species and herbaceous species, but primarily wood species. Again, I mentioned they like to drill down into that phloem and suck out those sugars. Otherwise that stuff would come out as sap. 
Now, some of those species, for example, include the maple tree. So I mentioned I'm right here next to a red maple and they like the maple, perhaps because the maple has a high sugar level. That shouldn't surprise any of us here, right? We tap maples each and every year to make our maple syrup. Turns out that they produce a lot of sugar inside, and that's what makes them delicious for us, and also economically important in the state of Pennsylvania and throughout the Northeast. So certainly maples are also on that list uh, to keep an eye out for. Another question. Why do they lay eggs on cars or other like that. Sure. So they do prefer any kind of well-protected area. Now, host trees, for example, the, the uh, tree of heaven, I say it's a host tree because the entire life cycle of the spotted lanternfly can be carried out on that host tree, on that tree of heaven. So that means that the adults can arrive in the fall, lay their eggs on the outside of tree of heaven. Those eggs can then hatch and they can grow to their full adult life and then mate again and then be laying right on the same tree. So that's what, that's what a host tree offers. I forget the first part of the question. <laughs> why, do they, why do they lay eggs on cars? Oh, thank you very much. My director's keeping me in line here. Uh, why do they lay eggs? Again, as I on said, cars. on cars. As they prefer any kind of um, well-protected area. And they also prefer smooth surfaces. So we don't just see egg masses on, for example, the maple tree here or the tree of heaven that I mentioned before. We've also seen them on the underside of car hoods, sometimes on the sides of park benches, sometimes where infestations are really, really heavy. We can see them just alongside um, construction equipment that's been near an infested hardwood area. So any kind of smooth surface that's well protected, the temperature range isn't too extraordinary, and there's not any kind of high energy environment, we could see an egg mass lane there. Another question. Can you touch the egg mass or should you try not to? Can you touch the egg mass? Well, it turns out that the spotted lanternfly can't hurt you. So that's why you want to make sure that you can squash them when they're the adults and squash them when there's still eggs here. So here I can touch the juice. It's not going to hurt me. I wouldn't recommend using it as face lotion or putting it in my mouth, right? Whenever we're out on nature hikes, we want to make sure that we're not tasting anything, uh, that we're not absolutely sure of what it is. Um, this, this goes for the, the spotted lanternfly. I'm not familiar with any kind of scientific evidence that suggests spotted lanternfly can hurt us if ingested, but I still, don't, I still don't recommend that route. So no, the spotted lanternfly, as far as we know, cannot hurt humans' health. When scraping the eggs off, do you have to do it in two steps like you showed us, or is that just to demonstrate? Sure. Excellent question. And my technique might have been a little bit sloppy there, so we can try one more. And you probably want to do at least two scrapes. I like to do that first one to make sure I'm squashing all those eggs and then that second one to get them off the tree. And you might want to go back to be quite thorough and make sure you get every individual egg. Remember, this is a great opportunity for you to kill off as many spotted lanternflies as possible. It's tricky, I know from personal experience, and I'm sure many of our viewers do as well, to kill that many when you're hopping around trying to squish them with our feet. Which do you think is easier? We'll leave that up for you to decide. So we'll do one last one and we'll show you that technique. So we'll target this one here. Can you see that one okay? All right, we'll use our plastic baggie again. Remember, I'm gonna use my plastic card. I'm gonna go up to crush them and then I'm gonna scrape them into my bag. <laughs> it doesn't get better. So I've crushed them. I'm gonna go once more because I'm sort of at a funky angle here. There we go, really crushing them that time. So I've crushed them now, and I'm just gonna scrape them off. Alrighty? Now it might be tough to see from your camera angle, but it looks as though I've got every egg. I'm gonna go back once more just to be sure. Icky, another question. Yes. Uh, do they all hatch at once? It's an excellent question. Um, they'll probably hatch all within a few days, perhaps a week or so of one another. And this time of year is absolutely perfect time to go hunting for them. Now, why is that? Well, first off, it's beautiful weather. Second off, again, as we mentioned, we're it's during the quarantine, we wanna get some healthy air. So why not get some fresh air for ourselves? But thirdly, 
Most importantly, we're coming up on their hatching time. Now, typically late April into May is when the spotted lanternfly begins to hatch. So that's absolutely when we want to be ready to crush these egg masses. In fact, we should be looking for them already. Now, when the egg masses do eventually hatch, the critters inside automatically feel compelled to climb upwards. So another great mitigation technique, especially for those of us that have big yards and perhaps a lot of trees with a lot of egg masses, maybe we're worried that we haven't killed off all of those egg masses. A great technique is to use what's called a tree band. Now, if you'd like to learn more about tree banding and indeed mitigation techniques more broadly, you can check out the link to Penn State Extension that we're gonna drop in the bottom of this video description. But what a tree band is, is essentially double-sided sticky tape. A tree band very simply goes around the trunk of the tree. You'll probably want to bring it up a little bit higher. I'm not sure where the camera ends, but above all of the egg masses certainly that I can see. And that sticky tape simply traps the critters as they're climbing upwards. Now I keep saying critters, the proper scientific term is called an instar, instar. So when spotted lanternfly eggs hatch, the first nymph or the baby phase of it is called an instar. And there's actually three different phases of instars and each is characterized by different coloration on its back. The very first babies you'll see, the first instars are black with white spots on their back. And again, when they, um, when they hatch, they automatically feel compelled to climb upwards. And that sticky tape on the tree band will help catch them. Some folks have raised concerns about using tree bands because tree bands can trap other insects or squirrels or birds that we actually might want to keep healthy in the natural environment. So some solutions to this include covering the tree band with a layer of chicken wire that's raised off of the tree such that um, birds can land on it without getting stuck in the tape um, or other uh, climbing species, climbing rodents, for example, don't get stuck on that tape. Another question. Are spotted lanternflies edible? If so, are they tasty? Are they edible? If so, are they tasty? I have not tried a spotted lanternfly myself, so I can't speak to that delicacy. But as we do know, they can probably be eaten by birds and other insects. It's just that they haven't been here long enough for those birds and native insects to know that they like to eat them. So for example, I mentioned at the beginning of the video that we're just starting to observe a, a native insect starting to eat the spotted lanternfly, and that's a mantis. Um, so we'll have to keep an eye out for the science that emerges on that. Um, but right now they are not being eaten by birds, even though scientists believe that they probably can be. Now, again, as far as human consumption goes, I, I can't advocate for that um, on this space. Check out again that Penn State extension and maybe we'll see a special treat uh, come up for us in a few months. Amy, go ahead. Is the problem worse or getting better year over year? Is the problem getting worse or is it getting better? Well, it depends on where you are. And it turns out that some regions are, have seen that this past summer, summer 2019, was better than previous infestation seasons, okay? But in other areas, it's the exact opposite. And I'm going to keep referencing Center City, Philadelphia, because that's what I noticed, what I observed personally just last summer. I don't remember seeing spotted lanternflies anywhere near the number that we saw in Philadelphia last September. Now, it could be because they're just starting to figure out that there are more trees to eat that they like throughout the city and they probably bounce from tree to tree. Um, but right now, um, I can't speak to the overall state of, um, of spotted lanternflies within Pennsylvania, but we do know that the quarantined region, this is a separate quarantine from what we're under right now, that term kind of hits close to home these days, there's a separate county quarantine, which identifies, I believe, 13 or 14 individual counties in the southeast Pennsylvania region, where we know spotted lanternflies already exist, and we want to keep them from spreading out of. So in order to do that, the best technique we have is to check our cars when we're traveling in and out of the quarantine zone. Any other questions? Yep. One last One question. Last. So from a health and safety perspective, how concerned should we be about being in the woods like this and getting uh, COVID? 
and getting COVID. Okay, it's an excellent question and it's an important question, um, I think, for us to end with. Now, right now in the state of Pennsylvania, our parks are still accessible to us. And it's really important that we recognize that this is, a, this is a privilege. Yes, we collectively own these spaces, but it is a privilege. And we have to make sure that we're maintaining proper social distancing when we're using our parks. Now, for those of us watching at home with big backyards, go out, feel free to check out the trees in your backyard and take a look for these, um, for these egg masses. For those of us in cities, we probably want to be a little bit more targeted if we want to go hunting egg masses. So again, check out that link that we provide and take a look at which tree species live near you, right in your neighborhood, and where you can go safely in an area well distanced from other folks to be able to start uh, hunting these spotted lanternfly egg masses. We will most definitely keep you updated if there is a change on any kind of park restriction. Well, that does it for us today, folks. Again, I'm Rachel Valletta. I go by Dr. Dawn when I'm out in the woods, on the trail. This is a beautiful day. I hope to see you out here at a great distance. Make sure you're taking in observations of the world around you. And it doesn't have to be of nefarious critters such as the spotted lanternfly. You can follow along with Franklin Outside at hashtag Franklin Outside and take some photos with us. So far, we've already seen some beautiful photos of robins and daffodils, and just yesterday, a beautiful species of bumblebee. Stay well, and hope to see you out on the trail.